Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon.
and welcome back. So you just heard the trailer for disc number 14 in the 88 Films Italian Collection series. This one is Burial Ground. Uh, let's go to the 88 Films website, check out the blurb. It says, in Burial Ground, the carcass crunching action comes thick and fast as veteran director Andre Bianchi, who is known for strip nude for your killer, evokes the sinister flesh feasting spirit of Lucio Fulci and George E. Romero. Also known as The Zombie Dead and Knights of Terror, Bianchi's bout of bloodstained brilliance has a pack of ghoulish predators entrapped some ridiculously ill-prepared locals in a moody, malevolent mansion. Suffice to say, a mammoth amount of stomach-turning, meat-munching mayhem ensues. They love their alliteration over here. Um, adding to the on-screen unease, Burial Ground stacks its story with a series of sickle special effects courtesy of legendary grocer expert Gino De Rossi, who worked on City of the Living Dead and House by the Cemetery, and a little movie called Cannibal Ferox. Only the golden age of Italian horror could have delivered a movie meal of such outstanding insanity as Burial Ground brought to you uncut in the UK and uncensored by the splatter sympathisers at 88 Films. Uh, the movie had a plethora, a plethora of um, extra features here, special features. They have a bonus new restoration from the original 16mm negative. Restored English soundtrack. Restored Italian soundtrack with newly transferred English subtitles. Bonus grindhouse version from an unrestored 35mm projection print. Interview with Michael Coven, author of Le Dolce Mort on the films of Andre Bianchi. A new audio commentary by expert John Martin, moderated by Callum Waddle. Trailers, deleted scenes, collectible poster, a postcard, a reversible sleeve. Um, and other little bits and bobs. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is actually this this release was stacked, which I was quite happy about because once again I'm of the opinion that you're going to put these movies out and you want me to buy them. I'm going to have to buy them anyway because I want to have them in the collection. But do a little bit extra um, and shove a little bit of that bonus content out there. Um, the, a lot of the people that are involved in these projects are still alive, so get a word with them, even if it's just a quick five minute interview or something, get it done and get on these things here, uh, because that makes me happy when we get a bit of that. Now, let's let's just take a couple of seconds to talk about the, the actual plot of Burial Ground, um, and then we'll, we'll talk about my thoughts on the movie. Like I say, I've already reviewed this a good four months ago with Ricky Morgan, and my score still stands. I still think this movie's fucking great. Uh, but the the synopsis for the movie goes a little something like this. So to say that the plot of this movie is slim, and uh, let's just put it this way, a bit lean would be an understatement. There is a fantastic rumour, um, which I would love to see um, proof of because it's just like one of my favourite stories ever in Italian horror cinema that the original uh, plot for this movie was written on a single side of A4 paper with space left over uh, which which kind of works kind of great uh, we have a, press, uh, a professor who is looking at some ruins uh, underneath this large mansion um, he recites some uh, some words he probably shouldn't he resurrects the dead who hunt him down Meanwhile, we have this holidaying group of people that are staying in a mansion who are slowly and quite viciously picked off by the dead that have come back to life. Um, and this weird relationship between a mother and son which starts to move from being fairly straightforward and fairly serious. Well, when I say fairly serious, I mean like in maybe 30 seconds it starts off serious and it gets incredibly weird creepy and then incestuous and by the end it's just plain fucking wrong um, yeah the zombies pick them off one at a time working their way through them munching their innards um, and yeah that's kind of there is the plot is so fucking razor thin where this movie excels is the gore the gore in this movie is so violently over the top it's kind of phenomenal you basically have a lot of the crew um, and people behind um, not only work on Filchy stuff, um, well, specifically work on Filchy stuff that are taking the the kind of shock values of a zombie flesh eaters um, and the the sensibilities of a dawn of the dead 
and bring them over in an environment where you really get out. This movie gives you a lot of bang for your buck. And it likes to twist at the the way you look at things, even though we can see certain characters acting more innocently towards what the audience can clearly tell are already converted zombies. Uh, but yeah, they, they don't seem to see what the audience sees. It's wonderfully mis represented on screen you know it, it doesn't quite work and at times you could be watching it going what the fuck is going on but the movie just leans into it heavy and hard actually it doesn't at any point seem to have an idea of of characters being self-aware and it's one of the reasons I think it works so well. I think there's a, a tonal quality to this movie which straddles the horrific and absurd in a way which very few movies can nail. I think at times the movie has tonal inconsistencies along the likes of uh, Pieces, which came out the following year, um, where you get the feeling that people that are making this movie can understand the mechanics of how to make a zombie movie, they just don't quite understand how to make a movie, um, or how to tell story. Uh, how to construct plot devices Th that's not here um, some of the scenery is brilliant the, the, the mansion that they're in is, is inherently creepy uh, and some of the set pieces later on which involves like a, a kind of the ruins of a church where we're clearly looking at things which are you know props um, being moved around you know styrofoam blocks and stuff that I think work quite well uh, the ending builds to a, a, a wonderful crescendo of absolute kind of riotous gore in a way that I kind of just get behind and it's weird it's weird to kind of lean into like specific elements where I don't think Barry Ogren kind of just swings and gets a home run and when we kind of add all that up together the one thing that really stands this movie in its favour is the pace uh, we introduce the zombies pretty quick we then don't have to wait that long before they start trying to lay siege to the mansion house um, and then things just keep going out of tear from there it's about a 90 minute movie and when you watch it it feels like an hour like a brisk hour it just flies through with this really aggressive pace which you can kind of get behind a lot of these movies of this time would have a big bit of lag in the middle and you know th you know an hour 30 would feel like two hours or some of them would dare to go to the hour 45 mark which does not stand your movie in good stead when you are an Italian zombie movie you know you've got to keep them nice tight um, and on point and that's you know that's one of the big strengths of a burial ground viewing is you can sit down and pretty much it in any mood at any time and it'll fly in regardless if you're paying full attention to it or not and then if we turn our, our eyes um, to the casting, like I say, mother and son combo. Uh, son played by Peter Bark, who was 25 years old and is playing like a 10-year-old in this movie. And the reason they had to opt in for that is because of the sexual content that happens later in the movie. They couldn't obviously have a minor or a child doing that uh, for obvious fucking reasons. So they cast this 25-year-old who has this weird kind of almost Oompa Loompa bullish cut. And we have that infamous scene of him acting scared and his version of acting scared is just wide-eyed. You know, kind of dull face, wide-eyed, as, as wide as possible. Uh, he is one of the most wonderfully annoying and kind of yet at the same time amazing characters ever in Italian genre cinema. And kind of one of the last points I want to touch on here is the, the score in the movie, which is so fucking wonderfully weird. It just adds to the insanity that's on the screen. Um, Bert Rexon, uh, who was, I believe, a jazz musician. And Elcio Manchuso uh, had done stuff before uh, for soundtracks, most notably kind of the spaghetti western genre. Uh, where they became became kind of semi-famous in doing the, their scores over there. Um, work on this sim track here, it's <laughs> it's a very strange one to say the least. What you get here is kind of electronic experiment. I was going to say experimentation. It's not even really. It's weird, like, kind of almost droning and at times arpeggiated um, electronic tones and some jazz kind of flung in. And the two styles don't really work all that well. And at times the music is playing more kind of tense over things that are not happening and not in a way which would make you feel tense, in a way that feels confusing. The movie kind of has all the structures of very weird jazz. Um, 
and it kind of adds to the nonsense. It really, really goes all over the place. I think it, it, it makes me kind of once again wonder if anyone had ever really worked on a movie before this. I know they all had, but the, the parts somehow... It's like getting a jigsaw and starting to put it together and realising that maybe three jigsaws that have similar size, size pieces have all been muddled up and none of the bits... Well, they all fit, but none of them make one picture. And that's kind of where you are when you have this sim track dancing over the top. And all that swings are really to the end. There isn't really much more I can say about it. I, you know, I had a, a really great chat on episode 135 with Ricky about it. And we go into a bit more in-depth on the plot. Although the plot itself... We're really just talking about things that happen on the screen as opposed to plot. Because the plot itself is fucking razor thin. Um, it's, a, it's a thin meal... Uh, of a plot so yeah I don't really have that much more to say about it except this movie is the very definition of be fucking ton of fun uh, my score has not changed for this one it's a 5 out of 5 um, 5 on the Netflix scale means I love it doesn't mean it's the best technically made movie ever it just means in terms of how I feel at the end of it it's always going to be a 5 for me so it's a pure fucking joy absolute bollocks mental popcorn munching beer drinking with lots of your friends, mental out there, Italian bastard movie. I can't, I, I, it's I, like I smile every time I think about it, it's the third time I've seen it this year and I can't guarantee it will be the last time before the year is out. Um, so yeah, do yourself a favour, you can pick this up just now, really cheap, I think some sites on Amazon are selling it for about £6, the 8 Films website is selling it for 8 99 and HMV had a deal on, I don't know if they have any more, but it was about £6 in there as well, so if you can get your hands on it, get your hands on some burial ground and get ready for one of the most nutty rides you've ever been on.